Hi, I wanted to share with you a few quick tips and tricks on how to use my quick fix actions. There's 24 actions here that are going to really help you fix some of the issues that we face when shooting and um, some things that are out of our control and then obviously if we don't get that exposure right in camera. But again, getting the exposure right is always going to save you lots of time during your editing. When you download your uh, actions from the website and you've unzipped them, you're going to see um, a folder with the, the actions in them and then you can come back into Photoshop and you can go load actions and in your downloads folder and that's where you'll find them. So a really quick way to load your actions, but again, if you are having problems, please visit the newbornposing.com website. If you go to the, the FAQs page, you'll find information on how to load your actions and other information as well regarding them. And if you go to the blog section, you'll also find a blog post on actions and how to use them. It's basically all the frequently asked questions that uh, are answered there for you. If you do download your actions and you see a folder in there that says Mac OS X, please ignore that folder. Um, that's something that we actually can't control. It's, it's an update that's been done on the internet. So unfortunately it pops into that folder sometimes. Just ignore it and you'll find your action set in the other folder. All right, so I'm gonna go through each of these very quickly just to show you what they can do. I've also got a couple of photos here, um, an overexposed photo, an underexposed photo, and then just um, a normal photo from a set of, uh, a session with a set of twins. So I'm gonna go through each of these. We've got um, lighten actions, we've got you know actions that are gonna help you protect your highlights and then obviously help lift some of your shadows if you are underexposed. We've got color correct actions and we've got contrast and things like that. So we'll go through each of them. All right, so a quick lighten. Let's go to our darker image. This is going to produce an adjustment layer. The opacity is at 30%. So you can either increase that or you can decrease it or you can invert that layer mask. Here we have a, a, an adjustment layer with a mask. When the mask is white, it means the layer has already been applied. So you can see by turning that on and off. If the mask is black, and you can do that by inverting that mask, the layer has not been applied and you need to paint it on. And you paint it on with a white brush and you can change the opacity of your brush to taste at the top there. So that's a really great little action there that's going to help with some of those um, less, less um, exposed images. And if we want to darken, we can come up here to darken. Now, unfortunately, we do have some overexposed highlights here, but just to show you, that's going to darken it, but it is going to introduce some, some areas or, you know, highlight some areas that you could have got right in camera, Kelly. <laughs> but again, you can do that, um, you know, adjust the opacity and invert it or and paint it on if you like in terms of how you use that action. And the beautiful thing about all of these is that they're fully adjustable so that you can work on them um, to taste for each image and have full control over where you apply the different actions and treatments. All right, lighten the shadows. Let's have a little look here. So this has done a global lighten and it's lifted the shadows and midtones throughout the entire image. Uh, it is at 100%, so if you were to invert that mask, you could paint that on wherever you want that to be painted and adjust according to taste. Right, this one here, the fill flash, I really like this. This allows you to Lift your shadows without impacting your highlights. So you can see here, we are not changing our highlights. If you have a look at the histogram at the top of the screen there on the left, when I lift that up, it's not really doing too much to my highlights, which is fantastic. So I can retain those, but lift up some of that darker information. It is a really great one. 
All right, let's take that back to the raw file and let's go across to our overexposed where we have our highlight protection uh, action. And if you press play on that, and you can adjust that to taste, but let's press OK. And you can see how that's managed to bring back some of that information. Obviously, when there's no information, it can be very hard. That's at 50%. So if you wanted to, you could bring that up and then you could invert that mask and paint it on to those areas uh, with a lower opacity brush so that you could control how much you're painting onto some areas um, that require a little bit more treatment. And you can see just by doing that, it's saved some of that information for us, which is fantastic. Now you might have, let's come across to our babies, um, you might want to push some of your highlights to give it just a little bit more of a, a punchy effect. So we have a black layer. What I'm going to do here is instead of painting this on, I'm actually going to invert the mask to show you what it's going to look like, Command I, so you can see how it's really sort of pushed those highlights up. Um, but we'll undo that invert and you can see how just painting that on there at a lower opacity can really improve that sort of contrast and, and the um, brightness of the skin. All right, we've got to darken the shadows as well. So this is where you might just want to bring down some of your darker areas. So if we go back to our underexposed image and you know I'm going for a, a nice moody sort of look, I'm going to hit play. And then what I can do, I'll invert again to show you, and then we'll take it back off, and then we can start to paint on a bit more if this was the look that you were going for. And the beautiful thing, like I said before, is that you can have full control over this. All right, lighten skin reds. Let's go back over here to our babies. We have two two skin red actions. One is normal for normal sort of red skin tones, like what we see here, and the other, the reduced reds more. That's going to help you with more problematic red skin tones. So we'll press play, and then depending on the amount of reds that you're working with, you can adjust the opacity of your brush. Yeah, but I'm painting this on here at 40%. I'll just go over to build it and you can see the difference there. And then if we were going to reduce reds more, It's going to give me another layer here. I'm going to bring the opacity down a bit more. The opacity of the actual layer is at 30% and my brush is now at around sort of 40%. And we'll come in a bit closer and this is going to help you in some of these areas. If you have a baby with quite sort of dark purpley colored feet and hands, this is going to be perfect. But again, you don't need to have the opacity up too high with this. All right, so you can see the difference that makes. So that is a great action, like I said, if you've got a baby um, or, you know, anyone that's got sort of quite dark red skin. All right, so now that we've done that, and sometimes when you reduce those red skins, you'll often get um, some sort of grayer, flatter tones. So we're going to now work on reducing some of those blue tones. And I'll come back to yellows in a moment. All right, so again, this is at 20% and I can come in and paint 
over some of those cooler areas to help warm them up to match the rest of the skin. Alright, so it can be very subtle. Um, obviously, it's all going to depend on the images that you're working on and how much you need to apply. And that's why when you're working with actions, you need to understand, you know, how to ad adjust the brush um, in terms of the opacity and then um, how, you know, how intense the, the layer opacity needs to be as well. And when you've got a black mask, it's like I said, you've got to paint it on with a white brush, but if you've painted on too much, let's just say I'm painting this on at, you know, 100% and I go, oh, that's too much. I can change that by hitting the X key back to a black brush and then I can start to take, take that layer back off some of the areas where I might have gone too far or gone over into, go back up to 100%, into areas that we don't want to spend um, to apply that layer to. So again, it's going to you know help you with that. The blue, there's some also some blue blue gray tones in the blanket you can paint it onto. So these work with everything that you could possibly photograph. Um, when it comes to the yellow tones, let's go back to this image here. Let's just say we want to um, even out the tan. Someone might have um, a fake tan or you might be working with a baby that has jaundice or you might have a yellow color cast from something. I'll put it on 50% and again black layer mask and you can see it's just pulling that down. But again um, this is all going to depend on what it is that you're doing and how intense how much you apply it. But even if you get it to a point where it's nice and even and you think oh I'll just bring back the opacity you can still do that as well. Okay, uh, reducing the greens here, if I play this one, and I'll bring my brush up here to 100%, and then I can paint this on in some areas to help sort of bring back some of those green tones. And that reduces the intensity of those. Again, if you've painted an area that you don't want that applied, just click it back by hitting the X button and you can take that layer off. All right, so now if we want to warm up an image and let's go back to our babies and get rid of that one. Now if we want to warm up the entire image, you can see that's applied that to the entire image. You can take it off some areas if you find that it's making the skin too warm. You can use a black brush to remove, remove it off the babies. That's at 100% just to show you. And then if you want to cool things down a little more, let's go over here to this image where we've got a nice warm background. Let me get rid of this. And you might want to cool it down and you can see the difference there. That works on blankets, dresses, it works on um, skin, it works on everything. So you can definitely play around with that in terms of your white balance and getting it right. And reducing saturation, that, that is again another layer that you need to paint on. So let's go over the purple dress and you can see how that's reducing that saturation there and then you can bring back the opacity to taste and it works really well. Alright now we might want to add some contrast so let's have a little look here at the effect of this that has applied so we've got before and after and you can see how it's just really pushed those highlights and those shadows We'll do it on this image as well so you can see the difference. And we've got on and off. And it really gives it a nice punchy look. You can um, invert that mask and paint it purely onto the babies to help sort of separate them a little bit if you want to keep that background nice and soft. And that's the result there. All right, see, so we've also got a neutral boost. 
and we'll go back over here to this image doing that one and I'm going to invert that so I can show you what it looks like all the way over. It is a little different to the add contrast and this one just allows you to control that, that saturation a little more. So it works really well too. And then we have a vibrant boost and that, when we put that on, that gives it just that little bit more saturation and punch if you wanna bring those colors out. Okay, now let's go back over here to our flaky skin. And these little ones were quite flaky. So let's have a look at our light. And you can come in with, I'll show you at 100%. So obviously that's going to really blur that sort of area there. But let's undo that and now bring the opacity of our brush down and you can come in and just paint that on to taste. And that can really help you soften flaky skin. You can as well use patch tools and things like that, but this works beautifully. So we've got before and after and that's at the 8% painting it on so you can paint it on a little bit more if you want to but you do want to try and keep that texture in the skin without having to blur it too much. Works really well on the face. Now let's get rid of that one and we'll try the next one, heavy. And you can see the difference that makes. I always ask the parents um, about the flaky skin in terms of removal and it's up to them. You, once you've painted it on you can also reduce that opacity. Alright, if you've got an image that's got lots of noise, um, you don't really have a lot of noise here, you will start to sort of, oh, there is some noise in here, there we go, you will see noise in uh, darker areas of the image when you when it tends to be fairly, fairly prominent and underexposed images. But we can reduce the noise here. All right, so we've got before and after. And again, you can use the drop down and you can adjust each of those layers to taste. Or you can add a layer mask and paint that on to any area that you want to improve. It's a great one. All right, you might also want to add some noise. So we'll come, come in here. Adding noise often Helps sort of sharpen up images or give them, you know, just that grainy sort of look. And it does often help with printing on beautiful fine art prints to make them look a little sharper as well. But um, you might just prefer it. And going back to the film days, you know, I often preferred um, a little more sort of grain in my images. So that's light. And let's have a look at our chunky noise. All right, so just a little bit more intense there. And you can adjust all of that to suit. Now, if you end up with some banding in your images, when we go into the background of our photo here, where we start to lose a little bit of information in terms of the quality, like it's softer, it's out of focus. Um, when you do, and you can see the, the graduation here from a darker sort of pink tone through to a lighter area. Now, if I started to paint over the background, and this is something that I used to do often. If I paint, 
I start to remove some of the quality of that file and you can now sort of start to see that banding that's happening there and the more you kind of work it and get rid of that quality of information there yeah, the more banding you're going to introduce okay so that's why I don't like painting into backgrounds anymore or painting backgrounds on because you're going to lose a lot of that information so when you do have banding like this and I'll just flatten that to show you we'll press play um, we can improve that banding by putting some information back into there so I'm just painting this on at a lower opacity so you can see I'm adding some noise in here and then press play again and now you can start to soften some of that noise to help match the texture throughout the rest of the image so let's go back here and have a little look So we've got our banding there and our after here. So that can definitely help you and banding tends to be a little more noticeable when you are printing. So yeah, they're my quick fix actions. They are my go-to with every single session. There's a lot you can do with it, but again, they are fully adjustable so that you can apply them to your images to taste. And I know you're going to love them and they're gonna come in very handy.